What's up guys, welcome to another episode. Uh, today we're gonna to be talking about filling up the tank and how I fill up the tank. So Laurie and I are back around Brisbane and the sunny coast. We've been traveling all the way up North Queensland and we did that for about four months and we're back um, around you know, home soil at the moment. We're just uh, getting some more money and chilling out for a bit from traveling on the road. So sorry I haven't made a video in a while about the van, but I thought it was um, definitely time to make another one. So let's get into it. So to fill up the tanks, um, I store the hoses underneath the bed here and the couch. And I've actually got two separate hoses in case the tap that we fill up at is quite far away. So generally it just takes one hose to um, to get the length of the distance to the to the tap but if we need to we just plug the hoses together and it gives us an extra 15 meters now i know you're probably asking how long does it take until you have to fill up again how long does your fresh water tank last and when traveling with two people with uh showering you know once every second day uh drinking water dishes and everything else generally it's about three to four days we have to fill up again um, but if it's solo you probably get about five days roughly but every single time we fill up it's been you know a little bit different but generally on average it's around three to four days now in australia there's tons of different parks and public areas around and they normally have a tap and i've got a little uh tap adapter thing that screws onto pretty much any tap in australia and i've also got one of those little brass four-way keys in case it doesn't have the handle on it and that way I can still use the tap. And in case you're wondering, my freshwater tank holds 110 litres. And since being on the road, we did have a bit of problems and the initial strapping that I used to hold the freshwater tank up snapped and broke. Luckily, it didn't happen while we were driving, so no damage happened to any other parts of the vehicle or the tank. It happened while we were filling up in cans and it broke. You might've seen that video, I'll link it there. Um, and I actually, to fix that, Initially, I doubled the strapping, but then um, like a couple weeks later that one of the backup straps broke again. I said, nah, this is it. I've got to really reinforce this with some proper steel. So I used uni strut and booker rods with um, five mil 90 degree bit of steel to put the booker rods through, bolt it to that, and then the uni struts at the bottom. But for now, we're gonna uh, fill the water tank up and I'll show you just how simple it is. And this is the little tap piece. As you can see, that's the part you screw on to the tap. And if it's a bigger one, you can screw that out. And a bit of rubber just fell out, but that um, seals it. So you've got two different sizes, and then your hose just plugs on there. And this is in my pantry to check the tank gauge level. As you can see on the right side, that's the fresh water tank. Um, we're dead empty, so it's time to fill up. So this is the inlet to hooking my van up to mains water supply. And this uh, city water inlet actually drops the PSI from mains to, I believe, 45 PSI to protect your pipes inside. And inside this uh, mechanism, there's also a check valve. If your pump is on in your van, um, water can't come out here that direction. It can only go in. And that's the other side of the tank, tank inlet. Um, this line goes to the inlet of the, the filling of the tank, of my fresh water tank. And this line is basically just going to the taps in the shower, bypassing the pump up there um, so that if you want to connect to mains permanently or temporarily, um, you can do that. So to allow the water to go into this tank, all I'm going to do is turn this valve. And you can hear it. Now it's going in and it's going to be filling this tank. Now when that um, gets full, there's a breather valve on the top of this tank, which comes over to this line. and it just basically comes out of that pipe out there and just starts dribbling on the tire. And that's what happens when it's full. And then when it's full, you just turn that off. So here's the uni strut that I was talking about before. That is 
pretty solid steel and that's bolted to 12 mil booker rod or threaded rod which goes up to 5 mil plate that's attached or roofing screwed to the chassis of the van so i haven't had any problems with the this setup now it's no chance that it's going to break and i've also got rubber bits in between here so it's not metal on plastic it's just a bit of protection there so a lot of people have also asked me like you've got no protection it's just plastic when you're driving what happens if rocks and stones hit your tank um honestly i've driven on some pretty rough roads this is pretty thick plastic um and i cannot see a rock actually piercing that plastic unless i actually put the weight of the van on like a big boulder or something that could pierce it but just rocks hitting it um i haven't had any problems yet and i really don't think i'm gonna have any and normally it takes about maybe about four minutes or so to fill up the tank from empty and then i'll show you when it comes out the um overfill overfill line and you'll see when it's full all right it's full now and i just turn it off so another pro of having um, this system where you can shut off the tank fill <coughs> is being able to be connected to the mains water supply indefinitely but not um, continuously trying to fill your tank so as soon as um the tank's full like you just saw then <coughs> i turn that valve off so no water can actually feed into the in the tank and then, but I can still, you know, have a shower and everything and I'll be using mains. I won't be using anything from my tank. So that's a really big plus. And that's sort of what we do on the road. Um, when we know we have to fill up water, we'll plug into a, um, like a tap like this and then we'll, we'll fill the tank up. And while we're there, we'll actually have a shower and use the water from the mains because, you know, why not um, use two birds with one stone, fill your tank, and also while you're connected to mains water supply, have a shower because, you know, you don't want to be wasting your newly filled up tank water. So we generally do that, <coughs> fill, the fill the water up, and then have a shower that exact same, you know, in that same time frame. And you're just killing two birds with one stone, so you don't need a shower, you know, later on that night or the next day, you know. So that's definitely a way to save water. And I'll just and I'll just show you the pipelines just real quick. You can see this in I think episode seven um, about the plumbing and how I installed it. You can go back to season one and see exactly how I did this, but I'll show you quickly right now. So this is the other side of the, the, the water inlet. And this line here with the valve, the shutoff valve, goes to filling the tank. This then goes out up to the pump and then out from the pump it goes over to this wire joint here now this side goes basically directly all the way there bypasses the pump and into this wire joint and feeds all the you know internal water appliances that way so basically that's where the pump and the mains water supply meet i've got a one-way valve there check valve so that when you're connected to mains supply the water will not push back that way into the pump and damage it. Water can only go that way. So that protects you, that protects you from mains. And also on the mains inlet supply, I've also got a one-way check valve so you can only go that way because I was having a problem um, when I first installed this, I didn't have that. And if this was open, um, water would continually cycle. The pump would push the water back through that wire joint over there come back through here and then through there into the pump and then back out and would endlessly cycle. So that's why I put that one way check, check valve there to stop that cycle. Might as well show you the gray water tank. This is, I believe, a, a, from memory, 67 or 68 liter tank. And that catches all your waste, waste water from your shower and your sink. Um, and to, is connected to this valve here. This is the outlet valve. And I basically just constantly leave this open so that any water that uh, we use from the shower or the sink just runs out onto the street because there's no use catching it. It's just, you know, wastewater. Um, this is not black water, it's just gray water. But if I did need to turn it off, I can block it off 
and it would store in there. Now, I, this is the original strapping that I used that broke on the other tank. I still have it on this um, tank though because one, it hasn't broken and two, I don't think it's going to break because this is a much smaller tank and basically it's bone dry, empty anyway, so it's not really holding any weight. And when I do lock this off for any reason, I don't do it for very long, maybe a maximum of a day and there's probably... I don't know, five, 10 liters of water in there. So it's really not holding that much weight. So I think that these straps will hold just fine in the long run. All right, so let's check again. And the fresh water tank is now saying it's full. The one on the left is the gray water tank. So that's obviously empty. So that is how we fill up the water tank on the road. Uh, there's abundance of taps and it's very easy. Doesn't take very long. And I hope this video has helped you. Still a lot, of, a lot more videos I've got to make about this van and how everything works, uh, especially the shower and everything. And I'll be coming really soon. So thanks for watching guys, and I'll see you soon. Bye.